Shalom and uh, welcome to the Middle East Report. In this programme today, we shall be exposing the evil gender behind the International Criminal Court in The Hague as they seek to bring an arrest warrant against the Israeli Prime Minister for alleged war crimes. Well, welcome to the programme and today's special guest is all the way from Oxfordshire. He's a good friend of mine, a good friend of the Middle East Report and of course we work together through ICJ UK as well. So Len Greats, you need no introduction. Absolute pleasure to have you back on the Middle East Report. Well, it's fantastic. It's always a joy to be with you, Simon. You're, you're a real close brother to me these days and I appreciate that. Likewise, thank you. Uh, and Len, I know that you and uh, the whole team at the International Christian Embassy uh, Jerusalem UK are, have ever since October the 7th done so much um, to mobilise Christian support for Israel, the Jewish people, um, as well as donating, is it over 150 or 160,000 pounds to Israel in our need because we know that Israel is at war against Hamas in Gaza. Can you just give us an update on the ministry and how they are really blessing Israel and the Jewish people at this very difficult time? Well, it's around about 200,000 pounds now. You know, God's people, thank you. If you've been given keep giving because the needs are so great. But we've just been very humbled actually, Simon, to see the way uh, in those who have a, a love for Israel and the Jewish people have responded. To, you know, they can't do practical things in going there, but they can give finance. And we've been able to do quite, uh, quite, a, quite a number of things, in fact. Um, we've put on some trauma um, uh, clinics in, in the land. We've bought uh, bomb shelters. We've been renewing bomb shelters. We've uh, bought a, a, an ambulance. We've been sending just just simple things like getting toys and, and kids stuff to those who have been relocated from the northern and southern borders. The, the children just, you know, the, the, many of these families left everything behind. And so we're trying to address this uh, in, in very you know, humanitarian ways. And really, as, as the needs arise, we try to address them. And, and of course, we're, we're just part of an international movement where you know, there's been millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars raised worldwide by the International Christian Embassy in Jerusalem, uh, which has you know, just recently bought another three ambulances. So we're part of a big family of people all uh, trying to address uh, and, and show, show love and, and fulfill the mandate for the ICJ, which was to, to comfort, comfort my people. And this is, if they've never needed comfort, it, it's, it's right now. Absolutely. And yeah, thank you uh, for what you are doing uh, and the rest of the uh, International Christian Embassy uh, Jerusalem UK. And it's a pleasure to work with you on the uh, Jerusalem Dispatch programme that's aired the first Monday of every month on Revelation TV at 9pm. There you go. Give it a plug. Um, now, uh, Len, I, I have literally just come back from the studios. I've been to the Israeli embassy this morning and this afternoon uh, for the screenage of the footage of October the 7th. Uh, this was filmed through Hamas's own body cams, uh, through their mobile phones, through CCTV cameras. Um, and I know that you've seen it as well. Um, I think I attended the this, this second showing of that, which is absolutely horrific. And um, so I'm really just at the moment as we go through this programme, still unpacking my, my thoughts and processing what I've seen. So not only have I seen that video footage, but I've seen what they've done at near Oz. I've seen the car park with 1,300 Israeli cars that were either burnt or, or shot up. And then seeing the footage then brings the, the places where you visit all together. Uh, what was your impression when you invited the embassy to see those horrific, genocidal mass terrorist attack by Hamas back on October the 7th? Well, I, first of all, can I say I'm surprised you're here to be able to do this uh, program this afternoon because, you know, when I was there, I, I couldn't speak. I, I just, it was just so devastating to see the, the, the horror and the violence and the 
the, the, the hatred that um, was expressed in, in, in these violent ways on, on, on October the 7th, it, it affected me deeply. I even now go back in my own thinking about it. This is back in January, so I've had a few months to recover from it. But the impact of it was so great, it, it made me even more determined to, to stand up for the Jewish people and to do what I could um, in, in, you know, in addressing this challenge that Israel faces right now. You know, they are the pariah nation. They're, they're, they've been they're just a small nation, less than the size of Wales. And yet it seems to be the whole world is turning against them. And uh, what, what nation would uh, go through what they went through and the, t and the world turn against them? You would have thought they would have got sympathy and support and encouragement, but no, the world has turned against them. And even today we're hearing about what's happening in the States on the campuses of, a, of uh, um, the universities and just driving here today, listening on the, the BBC News, how that they're now preparing for something similar in the UK. The, the, they've just, you know, the chancellors who have met with the prime minister in the last day or two uh, are saying we, we need to be prepared for this happening here. You think, what madness that causes people to do this? What? And I guess I, from a Christian perspective, I see that there's a spiritual force here been released. There's been a, a, a real spirit released amongst young people particularly. Uh, you know, I call it the uh, jump on the board culture, uh, jump, you know, jump on the band culture, you know, uh, the bandwagon that, that is, they're just jumping on it. That, uh, I'm sure many of them don't even realize what they're doing. But it, you know, that, that event that took place on, on uh, October the 7th has changed me and I think it changed me for good. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not going to go into any uh, graphic details, but obviously we're going to talk about the horrors that took place on October the 7th. So just a little bit of a descriptive warning of, of some of the things that we shall be saying, only for a few moments, but I think it's important to address. Um, I mean, there was one horrible scene um, that I saw that really stood out in my memory, and um, this was a father and his two young boys. They just obviously just woken up. They were in their underpants. And literally, uh, the father was taking um, his two sons to the bomb shelter, and then we see Hamas terrorists on the scene. They chuck a, a grenade into the bomb shelter. The father dies, and the two children are left crying their eyes out. And then a Hamas terrorist just walks into the kitchen calmly, takes out a bottle of Coke and starts drinking a bottle of Coke and then walks out. Um, and then, of course, then we see the scene later, of the of the uh, wife of the husband that was murdered by Hamas, hysterical, um, and I think when when you see the actual footage and and this is something I think that goes then deep into the character and the heart of the Jewish people and the Israelis is they don't want to broadcast this. I mean this was for a selected audience. They don't want to show the world all of this because they believe in life and they believe in the sanctity of life and the dignity of life. They don't want to parade uh, the victims of October the 7th and the horrors of what happened. They could easily do this and say, look, here's the massacre, here's the, here's the footage, constantly show that all the time, but they don't. Um, I, and that, I think, shows the incredible character uh, and the depth of humanity that's in the heart of the Israeli people and the Jewish people, unlike the vile, evil Hamas terrorists that did what they did. And, and you see them, every attack on an Israeli is followed by Al-Akbar. Well, the, you know, the, the Israeli people, the Jewish people are the most resilient. When you consider their history, you know, just within 80 years, what happened in the Second World War with the Holocaust and, you know, and the, the opposition that they've had for the, for the whole time of their existence. They've been at constant war with Arab nations. You know, and you think, w w what is it about the Jewish people that people hate so much? And you can only think that there's a spiritual force at work here that is, I don't know, it's like, you know, a hornet's nest is being released and we're seeing the, the effects of that today, but they are resilient and they'll come through this. And, but they will remember too. You know, they're, they're renowned for remembering things. Uh, you know, we've just celebrated Passover and that's all about remembering their great deliverance and God will again deliver them. And we saw something of that on uh, April the 14th when Iran sent their missiles over. That, that was a miracle par excellence from God. 
No, absolutely. And, and, and uh, also the thing is, what, when you see the footage, and I'm sure that a lot of Israelis would have seen that footage, they would have known people that were massacred on October the 7th. But there isn't that kind of response you would expect, and that is one of sheer vengeance, just wanting revenge. And they want the hostages back. And, and that's their primary concern. It's not vengeance, it's not retribution, as our mainstream media like to, to uh, portray Israel's conflict against Hamas in Gaza. It's just wanting to bring the hostages home and to ensure that Hamas don't ha have the capabilities of carrying out another October the 7th again. Well, that's what uh, Benjamin Netanyahu has said. He wants to finish this job with Hamas. He's done with Hamas, as is the nation. You know, they've been, Hamas has been sending rockets over for, for decades. Let's not forget that. This isn't something that's just stopped, sparked on one day. This has been leading up to, to, to a response from Israel for a long, long time. Yeah, 2007. And, yeah, and um, you know, it's, it, 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 it's, what nation wouldn't do the same? We would do the same. We'd say, listen, we've had enough. We're going to finish this off. We're going to finish Hamas off because if we don't, they'll do it again. They'll build up their, their forces. They'll get some support from Qatar and other nations and, um, uh, and they'll build up their forces and do the same. And they've said they will do it again. They want to do it again. You know, this is not about land. You know, this is about hatred of a people. Yeah. You know, this is it, when we talk about two, pal you know, two-state solution and all that. That's a load of rubbish because it it's just won't happen. They're not interested in the land. They just want to get rid of the Jewish people. It's it's genocide, pure and simple. And uh, and you know, we need to wake up to these facts. I also have to wake up to the fact, don't we, Len? Uh, it is the fact that Israel's on the front line in this war against this demonic evil ideology that is Islamism, and if Israel goes under then the whole West is going under. And already we're seeing that the Islamists are using the whole war in Gaza as a pretext to mobilization uh, for Islamicization and to flex their political muscles and show that they are forced to be reckoned with. So if our nations don't defend Israel and allow Israel to defeat Hamas, then the great danger is that same demonic spirit that's attacking Israel is also after the West as well. So there is no escape. We either stand with Israel, and our Western and the God of Israel and our Western civilization survives, or we give in to Hamas and the terrorists, and our own civilization is in serious peril. Yeah, well, I've, I've believed, as many people have believed for many, many years now, that the biggest threat to the Christian church as well as to the Jewish nation is the religion of Islam. You know, I know there are some lovely people in there who um, would be nominal and wouldn't would d disassociate themselves from uh, uh, from what we're seeing on on the news, from what we're hearing that's uh, uh, happening. But the fact is that there is within the very culture and the heart of Islam this uh, mandate to, to for world domination. You know, the, the, they believe that the world is going to come under Allah. And, uh, and we saw that on October the 7th. What, what, what was the response when these people were going in killing the Israelis? They, it was Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. You know, and the, 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 there is a hatred in the religion, at the heart of the religion, that's coming out and it overflows. You know, we, we, why is it that most of the terrorist or, um, uh, events that's taking place over the past years have all been coming from the Islamic community? Th I think they need to stand up and take hold of themselves if they want to be at the table and discuss things. They need to face up to their own challenges and they need to, to say, you know, we've got some cancers in our religion, and, and, but they won't. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, sadly, this is uh, kind of uh, calling for a kind of reformation. I mean, you can see that for tactical reasons uh, and the kind of need for necessity, we've seen the likes of the, uh, the Gulf states, uh, the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, even the Saudis have realised how poisonous and dangerous uh, Islamic extremism is. And the fact that Mohammed bin um, Salman, uh, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, has kind of recognised that uh, Saudi Arabia's support for Wahhabism, which is the extreme interpretation of Islam and jihad around the world, actually threatens the very foundations of the house of, of Saud is an indication that they know that once the genie's out of the bottle, it's very hard to put it back in again. And that if the Saudis and the more Arab moderate states don't tackle this Islamic extremism, then they know that their own kingdoms and their own countries are in danger. Now, if 
the Saudis and the Gulf states can recognise this, why can't the West recognise this same spirit and need to tackle it as we see the carnage at our universities, as we see these hate-filled demonstrations in, in central London with a uh, chance of genocide against the Jewish people. And, and of course, that lesson from the Holocaust is that what starts with the Jewish people never finishes with the Jewish people. Just share with us how Christians as well really need to wake up um, to the danger that, uh, that Israel faces, but also we face from Islamic extremism that, that is, is not challenged or confronted. Well, it, it, it's, uh, it's amazing you should say this because I actually get a daily reading sent to me every day from Jonathan Kahn in the USA. Oh, yeah. Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. Yeah, he, he sent the one today, which was very fascinating. He talked about the gospel of, the, of data and he says we need to look at the data and he was uh, reporting on a recent survey that took place, a major survey that took place in the, in the US. And he says that really this next generation, this present generation, this, this generation that we're seeing, uh, you know, taking over the universities, they, uh, once they, you know, grow up into becoming into the, the, the standard generation, that, that it won't be a Christian generation. It won't be nominal Christian generation. It'll be non-Christian and anti-Christian. Now that, that we're seeing in a generation, you know, when I grew up we, we, during the time when America was seen as the Christian nation of the world, in my lifetime, in less than my lifetime, and, uh, and other, other facts and figures that were coming out about 28%, 28% of young people in America identify with the LGBT cause. You know, it, 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 it's, fear, it's fearful, it's crazy. And, you know, if, if, if we need a wake-up call, then this is the time to, for us Christians to wake up and discover again our closet and to get rid of, of compromise in the church and get rid of, of, of playing around in religion and, you know, covering our programs. We need to find out what it is to get into the prayer closet Amen. once again. Amen, absolutely. So let's have a uh, listen, oh sorry, let's have a watch of this excellent uh, CBN news report uh, entitled Survivor of Hamas's Barbaric Attack on October the 7th. Do you feel like the U.S. is doing all that it can to help get your, your son home? So we have felt extremely supported um, and had tremendous access and transparency with what they can share with us mm -hmm. from not just the administration but all of congress we've met more than 50 senators at this point we've met with the president many governors and we've met just a tremendous amount of people in the american government who have made it very clear this is a bipartisan issue. There are eight American families who have hostages still being held. Tragically, three are now confirmed no longer alive. Is everyone doing all they can do? I like to think so. I pray that that's the case. I hope that that's the case. I say constantly, hope is mandatory. Hope in this situation is absolutely mandatory. I pray that everything that can be done is being done. Well, you've been at the UN, you've also met with the Pope. Do you feel like they understand that they get the situation? I appreciated when we were talking to Pope Francis and I showed him the video of Hirsch being kidnapped. He said, what you have experienced is terrorism and terrorism is the absence of humanity. So to me, it was very wise and very empowering and very comforting to hear that. When I spoke at the UN, I tried to just tell the story of all of us, all of humanity. We are all suffering right now. I'm very cognizant and I have always been very careful to talk also about the thousands and thousands of innocent Gazan civilians who are suffering. But I think that the world doesn't completely understand the situation of what's going on. The world doesn't understand who the hostages are that are being held currently. The original 252 hostages represented 39 different countries. They were Christian, Jews, Muslim, Buddhist, and Hindu. They ranged in age from nine months to 87 years old. I'm convinced that if they had been taken on October 7th, those 252 people, and were being held in Dallas, Texas, that the world would have shown up the next day. 
and they would have figured out how to get them out. But we're in a neighborhood in a region that is very complicated and very complex. And I don't think people want to take the time to understand the nuance of how complex and how complicated and how painful this neck of the woods is. So it's much easier to just take one side, black or white, and run with it. And I understand. So you mentioned hope, how, how crucial it is. What gives you hope? I really believe that God is in charge here, and that gives me tremendous hope that this will end in a way that we will have outrageous amounts of work to do. You know, in our family, obviously, we have a lot of uh, help that we will need to get for Hirsch mm -hmm. on many levels, on the physical level, on the soul and emotional, mental health sure. and emotional and psychological levels, but also in this whole region, we really need real solutions here. Mm -hmm. This has been complicated for many years. I mean, the irony is that many of the people who were taken from the kibbutz communities on the border were real proponents of coexistence and peace. How do you pray for Hirsch and how would you like, how would you like others to pray? Well, I pray throughout the day. Jewish people, there are some people who pray three times a day. I do it twice a day, the ritualized prayer. And then throughout the day, I'm saying psalms for Hirsch in his merit and in the merit of the other hostages being released. Praying that all of our leaders can do the right thing, even though that will require tremendous tenacity and courage, because it might not be in their interest to do what it takes to do the right thing. And I would pray that our hostages come home safe and sound. You know, there's still 19 girls being held, young women being held. They're presumed to be pregnant from the abuse that they have suffered. We need these people out now. I think it, things would move much faster if people actually really did the work that it took and had the courage to do the right thing. Of course, that was uh, very distressing, but uh, incredible sh courage and bravery shown by Hirsch's mother in doing all she can to bring her son home. So let's continue to pray that the remaining, hopefully the 133 hostages still there, are alive and do get, come back home to Israel and to their loved ones. Um, and we can't even comprehend how they must be feeling, what they're going through, um, and it's time to stand united with them in prayer and action as well. Uh, Len, discussing the, the kind of latest developments of Israel's war against Hamas, we, we know, for example, that um, the Israel, the IDF, are now fighting the last stronghold of Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad in, in Rafa. Um, this is where, obviously, there's going to be the most fierce fighting because you also see this is the largest concentration of the residents of Gaza in or in the south. We know that the international community, for example, is putting huge amounts of pressure, including our government and the United States government, to um, call for a ceasefire. Uh, but in your opinion, how important is it that the Israel finishes the job, destroys Hamas, not only so that the Israelis can have a better future, but also the residents of Gaza can as well, because we, the media mar narrative doesn't tell us that they are living under a totalitarian regime um, uh, under Hamas that is only comparable to that of the, uh, of the Taliban or the Iranian regime in, um, in Iran. I, I personally think it's critical that Israel continue and finish the job. You know, Israel's army is the most moral army worldwide, and that's recognized by military professionals. They recognize that Israel does everything possible to avoid civilian casualties. And so when we hear on the news about mass graves and uh, executions, th these are just not true. It's, it, you know, I, I've been involved with Israeli people for the last 40, for years. I know them. I know the culture. I know what they're like. I know what their character is. And their character is, is not what is portrayed on the news. You know, folks, turn the news off. 
and try and get some source, decent source, particularly from Israel. It might not be 100% true, but it's far more true than what you read and, and hear on the BBC. I think that Benjamin Netanyahu uh, has made up his mind that he's going to finish this off, even if it finishes him off. You know, and uh, he, he's lived in, it, throughout his whole premiership, he's had to battle Hamas on, on almost a weekly basis. And, he, you know, he, he's at that age of life when he says, listen, I, I'm not going to be around that longer, but I'm going to finish this off. This is one of the greatest evils that is on our borders and has caused so much damage and so Absolutely. much pain. And then the other aspect to this we, we need to bring about is the latest news this week that um, US Secretary of State Antony Blinken is currently meeting with Israeli leaders to try and get Hamas to agree to a ceasefire. Uh, our own uh, Foreign Secretary David Cameron um, is also going out of his way to try and pressure Israel to accept a ceasefire. So the current offer that they're offering Hamas is that Israel would carry out a 40-day ceasefire from attacking Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad in, in, in Rafah um, uh, in return for 30 hostages. And uh, Israel would have to release thousands of Palestinian terrorists with blood on their hands uh, in order for these hostages come to come home. To share with us the huge cost that Israel is paying, not only in its ability to defend itself against future attacks, the ability for Hamas to rearm and regroup, plus also the releasing of terrorists with blood on their hands from Israeli prisons and jails uh, in order to bring 30 hostages home. Well, Simon, you know and I know that this is what Israel does. It's done it repeatedly over the, for many decades where they've had to negotiate for one life, how many was it for Gali Chalit? It was a thousand hostages yep. for one life. You know that this is their their heart. They they love their people. They'll do anything they can for their people. But there must be a, a line drawn somewhere. And you know the the, the present ceasefire arrangements have, have been painful for Israel to to make these concessions. But it's now Hamas who are saying, well, you know, we're not, they haven't even responded to the present uh, uh, suggestion that's come from uh, America and, and Israel. So, you know, that speaks about these people. What, what sort of people, what depravity exists in the Hamas leaders, leadership that, that, you know, causes them to, to, to hate so much? You know, I, I saw coming up here today the, a, little, uh, a little badge that's being now coming out around London at the demonstrations and it says we love more than you hate. <laughs> that's a good one. And, um, and you know I, I'm going to try and get some of these badges, the stick on badges, you know sticky things. So uh, you know I, I want to wear one of those because I want to identify the Jewish people because that, that's where we as believers must stand too. We were called by Yeshua, by Jesus to, to lay our lives down. A greater love hath no man than he lay down his life for his friends. We've got to start laying down our life for our friends in the Jewish community here in the UK and in Israel, you know, and that might then uh, convince them something that, uh, that that our faith is real. I mean, if you can imagine what Israel's going through, and, and both of you have seen, both of us have seen the footage of October the 7th, and, and I've, I've been there and I've seen the devastation with my own eyes. And, and yet, you know, you can't help think that if that was Britain, uh, facing the same level of genocide as, as Israel faced on October the 7th, and, and we did during the Second World War with the Blitz, the policy of the British government then was one of vengeance. It was, yes, yeah, sorry, every German is now a target. You are supporting this regime, you are fighting for this regime, therefore you are a legitimate target. And so this is why we also saw the controversial bombings of Dresden and other places in Germany uh, with huge large numbers of civilian casualties. And yet Israel is fighting this war to destroy Hamas, to find the hostages and get them released, to avoid civilian casualties, at the same time being placed under huge international pressure to provide aid and humanitarian aid and support to their enemies who want to destroy them. Um, just share with us how 
the hearts of the Israelis are, are really reaching out to the people of Gaza. And this is not a, a planned intention to wipe them out, as many actually think it is. But they want to destroy Hamas, and they are allowing so many of these aid convoys back into Gaza to help them. And if it wasn't for Israel, I dread to think what state the people of Gaza would actually be in. Yeah, you know, again, we're not, we're not getting the true picture. The news is not reporting to us what's happening. There's, there's you know, there, there are far more trucks of aid going in from Israel. Israel is the main aid supporter of the, of the Gazan people, the Palestinian people. And I think we've also got to make a little bit of a difference between the Palestinian people and Hamas. Absolutely. This is a war against Hamas. And, you know, we've got to recognize that. But, you know, the, 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 w w what we're seeing with, with, with what uh, Netanyahu's uh, doing and, and the threats against him by the International C uh, Criminal Court, you know, is just atrocious, absolutely atrocious, because everything that they're being accused of is a lie. It's not true. They're not, you know, they're, they're bending over backwards to try and support the, the, uh, the uh, Palestinian people. <clears throat> it's Hamas that use them as shields, human shields. You know, the, we've, we've, we've heard about it. They put their armories in hospitals, in schools, everywhere where, the, where civilians are, that's where Hamas fights. And, you know, the, the opposite is, is, is the truth about Israel. But, you know, Benjamin Netanyahu has bent over backwards to, to try and fight a just and holy war. You know, the, the Bible does say, and I've just been reading it this week, uh, you know, in, in the book of Exodus, when Moses starts getting the law, God says to Moses, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. You know, we tend to be pacifists in, in the Christian world, but actually God, our God is a God of war too. His name is Adonai Seavot in Hebrew, isn't it? The Lord Absolutely, of Absolutely, the God of the, the army of, of, of hosts, the Lord of heaven's armies. Uh, you know, and he's, he's, a, he's a God of war. And, and if, you, if you, you know, there's a time for peace and there's a time for war, which is what Netanyahu said recently in one of his speeches. He says, listen, we want peace, but this is a time of war. Now, I, I, nobody likes war, nobody enjoys war, but, but sometimes you've got to defend yourself. And this is about defense. This is about uh, Israel uh, putting out of business those who are seeking their destruction. Absolutely. So let's have a look at one of the latest updates uh, from our friends at the IDF. And this is the IDF uh, spokesman talking about uh, aid going into Gaza to aid the humanitarian situation that Israel is doing all she can to help the people of Gaza. Over the last few weeks, the amount of humanitarian aid going into Gaza has significantly increased. In the coming days, the amount of aid going into Gaza will continue to scale up even more. Food, water, medical supplies, shelter equipment and other aid, more of it is going into Gaza than ever before. This increase in aid is a result of increased efforts, among them opening the Israeli port of Ashdod and a new crossing that was opened into northern Gaza and increasing the amount of aid coming from Jordan through Israel entering Gaza through the Kerem Shalom humanitarian aid crossing. We also facilitated the opening of dozens of bakeries in the north and the south of Gaza together with the World Food Program. Together with the United States Central Command, we are working on a temporary maritime pier known as JLOTS, which stands for Joint Logistics Over the Shore. This temporary pier will provide a ship-to-shore distribution system that will further increase the flow of humanitarian aid into Gaza. As part of the efforts to get more aid into Gaza, we are also expanding the designated humanitarian zones in Gaza, where the aid will be reaching and streamlining the distribution efforts together with the international aid organizations for increased efficiency. Getting aid to the people of Gaza is a top priority because a war is against Hamas, not against the people of Gaza. We seek to help alleviate the suffering of the civilians in Gaza. That is a result from the war that Hamas started on October 7th, 
when it massacred and kidnapped Israelis. The Israel Defense Forces operate according to the international law. We make vast efforts to minimize harm to civilians that Hamas is hiding behind because we see the suffering of civilians as a tragedy while Hamas sees the suffering of civilians as a strategy. That's why Hamas intentionally hides among civilians. That's why Hamas wages war from within civilians. And that's why Hamas has been stealing aid men for civilians in Gaza. We will continue to pursue Hamas everywhere in Gaza. We will continue to do everything in our power to bring back home our hostages. We will continue to fulfill our mission, free our hostages from Hamas and free Gaza from Hamas. So that video was a courtesy of the IDF, the Israeli Defense Force, and you can see there the efforts that Israel is going to to provide humanitarian aid in Gaza. Now, I don't know of any American, British or allied forces that have ever done so much as the same time going to war against this Islamist terrorist organization, Hamas, that is committed to their destruction. I, I, I just thought that was extraordinary, building, actually making so sort of like um, bakeries, to provide bread and food and everything else. Sadly, we, we, we don't see that on BBC or Sky News or ITN News or any of our major uh, news networks uh, in this country, probably not even in the States, to show the kind of humanitarian heart that Israel is showing. Um, when, you know, for example, any other nation would say, we're going to stop all aid going in, no food going in until we get the hostages. Give us the hostages, we'll give you food and aid. Uh, but it shows you the compassion and the heart of the Israeli people uh, towards their enemies. And, and also, I think it's important to remember, Len, as well, that um, around 17,000 residents of Gaza had uh, livelihoods in Israel prior to October the 7th, working on the kibbutzes, working on the fields, working with the local communities who wanted to uh, live in peaceful coexistence with their neighbours. And instead, they used that as an opportunity to provide intelligence on the homes of those living close to the Gaza Strip. So when Hamas carried out that attack, they knew exactly who lived where uh, and they could identify targets easy and, and kill as many Jewish people as possible. Yeah. Well, what other country feeds their enemies like Israel feeds you know, her enemies? She, as, as we saw there, you know, the amount of aid going in uh, is not just, it's not being reported. In fact, it, it seems to be that there's a, a conspiracy in the media to, to say the opposite. Uh, and we've got to start believing facts rather than what, you know, uh, agendas, media agendas. They want to keep this on the news. They make money out of all this, remember. <clears throat> so, we, you know, we've got to look for the truth. And it's the truth that's always uh, the first casualty of, of any war. You know, who, who said that? Was it Winston Churchill or somebody famous? Uh, and so it's, it's so important that we, we seek the truth. Um, you know, there, there are innocent Palestinians here, of course. Uh, but, it, but unfortunately, a, a lot of the Palestinian people also support Hamas. And as we saw on the 7th of October, it wasn't just Hamas um, warriors who came into Israel. It was, the, it was the civilian population, too, who came in and uh, pilloted the place and caused havoc, and as well as murdering and uh, raping many people. So, you know, but Israel's doing everything it can to, to support the Palestinian people. Absolutely. Uh, moving on to the kind of big uh, topic or news discussion of, of this week really has been um, the International Criminal Court in The Hague um, is wanting to issue an arrest warrant against the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and IDF generals for alleged war crimes. Um, even though uh, Israel hasn't signed up to the International Criminal Court in The Hague, it's not under its jurisdiction, uh, this seems to be no barrier for the ICC and wanting to bring arrest warrants against the Israeli Prime Minister. So if any member state has signed up to the ICC and Benjamin Netanyahu, the Israeli Prime Minister, finds himself in that country or an IDF general finds themselves in that country, then they could be arrested for war crimes. Um, when we know it was Hamas 
that committed the genocide and the war crimes in October the 7th. And, and it's Israel's right as any nation state's right to defend themselves against um, an invasion. Uh, and certainly we saw the biggest massacre of Jewish people since the Holocaust that occurred on October the 7th. So just unpack for us the, the absolute insanity that is, is presiding over the International Criminal Court. Yeah, well, we, we first of all need to go back a f few months to when South Africa took Israel uh, as a nation to court, uh, uh, being accused of genocide. And it was found at that time that Israel were not guilty of anything like that. They, they got a slap over their wrist, but I think they, they, that's because the court had to do something. Uh, but they couldn't find any evidence of, of anything that, uh, that uh, Israel had done wrong. And so to start focusing on the, um, the senior leadership of the, of the, the country of Israel, the nation of Israel, is, is just ludicrous, absolutely ludicrous. You know, you know um, the, the, the evidence is all in the positive. If it, if, if it went to a court and the truth came out, it would, they, wouldn't be, they wouldn't have a leg to stand on. They, they just wouldn't have a leg to stand on. Uh, the problem is that there's machinery going on here and Hamas have a very good machinery at getting out into the social media of, of getting lies out. You know, the, 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 the numbers that, for example, that we hear of casualties, where does it come from? It comes from Hamas. It doesn't come from independent sources. And they don't verify either. And they don't verify it. In fact, uh, I was reading another figure today somewhere or other that Israel said that they've killed around about 15,000 terrorists. Uh, you know, so that, that's their numbers. Um, but it, it, it's just crazy. And the crazy thing is that the, the chief prosecutor, whose name's Karim Khan, uh, from the International uh, Criminal Court. You know, uh, when, when he saw what took place on, on October the 7th, he said there needs to be arrest warrants for all the Hamas leadership. That was his response, because he went to see the devastation that took place around the, uh, the, 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 um, the kibbutzims. So, you know, the, he, he, he's changed his tune, and you wonder why he's changing his tune. Now, why is he suddenly saying, well, we're not going to put them out for Hamas, but we're going to sort of, uh, you know, try and get arrest warrants for, for senior leaders. Uh, and not just leaders, but he's talking about ambassadors. You know, anyone related to Israel it could become a threat. And so, you know, I, I know that, um, that Netanyahu is talking to Biden, saying, listen, you know, you need to help us on this because this is crazy, absolutely, absolutely crazy. So let's have a look at this uh, latest uh, CBN news report that looks into the fact that the International Criminal Court could bring criminal charges against Israeli leaders, both political and military, including the Prime Minister himself, Benjamin Netanyahu. President Biden has again told Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu the White House opposes Israel's planned invasion of the Gazan city of Rafah. Meanwhile, Secretary of State Antony Blinken is in Saudi Arabia for the first leg of a Mideast tour to lobby for a ceasefire in exchange for the release of hostages in Gaza. That's going to be right at the top of the list for Secretary Blinken to keep pushing for this temporary ceasefire. We want it to last for about six weeks. It would allow for all those hostages to get out uh, and, of course, uh, to allow for easier aid access to uh, places in Gaza, particularly up in the, in the north. The website Axios reports the the Israeli government has proposed a possible hostage deal with Hamas that includes discussing an end to fighting in exchange for the hostages. Hamas reportedly has no objections to the deal and is sending a delegation to Cairo. While ending the war has been a key Hamas demand, right-wing party members of Israel's governing coalition have threatened to leave if it agrees to what they call a reckless deal. Today, Hamas took credit for launching about 20 rockets from southern Lebanon into northern Israel. The IDF says they were all intercepted. Thousands demonstrated in Tel Aviv Saturday demanding the release of the hostages and the resignation of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his government after a Hamas propaganda video showed two Israeli hostages in captivity. 47-year-old Israeli Omri Miran and Israeli-American Keith Siegel who said, I want to tell my family that I love you very much. He then begins to weep during his message. In response, Siegel's family released a video with his wife, herself a former hostage who was released in November, saying, Keith, I love you. We will fight until you return.
133 hostages remain in captivity after more than 200 days since the Hamas attack. This is job number one of the government of Israel. Job number one, and they failed dramatically. They should go, all the governments, all the 64 members. Meanwhile, violent pro-Palestinian protests continue on college campuses across the U.S. Fighting broke out on the UCLA campus amid dueling demonstrations between pro-Palestinian and pro-Israeli protesters. UCLA officials say a barrier between the groups was breached, leading to brawls between the two sides. We would like very much for them to understand and to learn about the history of Israel. I believe that many of these young people have no idea. They just come because they follow someone but they don't know what is going on. On the diplomatic front, Israeli media reports the U.S. is trying to prevent the International Criminal Court from issuing arrest warrants against Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and other Israeli officials for alleged war crimes. Netanyahu posted on X, under my leadership, Israel will never accept any attempt by the ICC to undermine its inherent right of self-defense. Unidentified Israeli officials said the charges against Israel's leaders would be for allegedly preventing the delivery of humanitarian aid to the Gaza Strip and their military's aggressive response to the October 7th Hamas terror attack. They believe the court is also considering arrest warrants against leaders of Hamas. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Great roundup of the news affecting Israel um, by Dale Hurd there, a senior correspondent for CBN, and uh, it's great to be partnering with them. Uh, Len, uh, all I can say is when we look at the International Criminal Court in the, uh, in the Hague and just saying how morally apprehensible this is, and, and to actually accuse the Israeli Prime Minister and um, IDF generals of, of committing genocide in Gaza when there is no genocide, and the only genocide that was actually committed was by Hamas on October the 7th, uh, which amounts to war crimes of in, uh, deliberately murdering innocent civilians. Uh, I've seen the footage as well, chopping the heads off of Israeli soldiers, raping uh, you know, women, murdering 30 children and taking 30 hostage. Um, all of these are war crimes, not Israel's self defensive actions against an Islamist terrorist organization that is Hamas in Gaza, measures that are defensive, not offensive, and yet Israel's in the dock, the Israeli prime minister's in the dock, uh, and they want to issue an arrest warrant for his arrest uh, and to face uh, crimes of genocide in The Hague when it's Hamas backed up by the Iranians and even supported by uh, Fatah and the Palestinian Authority. They're the ones that should be in the dock not Israel. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, the, the crazy thing too, Simon, is that the, uh, the ICC recognised the state of Palestine. It's a member of, 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 of the ICC. I don't know, the, it's, it's a signatory to the ICC. <clears throat> so where is the state of Palestine? Where is its prime minister? Where's its people? Where's its democracy? You know, there isn't a, a state of Palestine. And, and so, but the state of Palestine is pulling the strings in the ICC. It's crazy, you know, it's absolutely crazy. Uh, but, it, but it's also, I, I think it's, it, it's, it's just a sign of the time that, of this anti-Israel sentiment that is, is sweeping the world. You know, it's, I've never seen anything like it. In, you know, it's getting worse. Yeah, you know, we're seeing a war in the, in the Middle East, yeah, but the war is actually worldwide now. And the fact that they want to take it to the ICC and take the, uh, the senior politicians and military leaders to court uh, to try and convict them of genocide, I think is one of the most crazy ideas I've come across because it's, it's just so, so far from the truth. I mean, if Israel wanted to destroy Hamas in Gaza, they could do it within less than a week and then just carpet bomb all of Gaza with mass civilian casualties. They don't do that well, because that's not the people they are. Uh, and the fact that they are actually risking the lives of their own soldiers to protect the residents of Gaza. And we saw earlier in this conflict 
how Gaza and sorry how Hamas terrorists were preventing the residents of Gaza from moving south when Israel issued them that warning that they need to evacuate Gaza City and go to the south because we are coming after Hamas and yet Hamas deliberately put women and children in the way used them as human shields and they want as many of their own people to die as possible um, and uh, this is their true intention and, and yet the International Criminal Court don't recognise this and we have this kind of moral absurdity to, to attack Israel. Uh, yeah, it, it's absolutely right Simon, you know, it, I've often thought that if the present uh, cultural world mindset was in existence during the Second World War, then Winston Churchill would have been charged with war crimes. You know, he carpet bombed Dresden, more than carpet bombed it, just wiped it off the, the map. So, so would have the American president. So those, uh, which one yeah, was it? Eisenhower. Eisenhower, Eisenhower that, you know, dropped the two bombs in, um, yeah, in, was, in yeah. Japan. Uh, you know, the, uh, we're hypocritical absolutely hypocritical you know what what's happening to uh, um, Tony Blair with with what he did during the Iraq war you know why why didn't wasn't he um, taken to to the criminal court as well yeah. there we go no, absolutely so let's have a look now at this excellent video where the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is defending himself and his nation against these absurd plans by the International Criminal Court to issue an arrest warrant for his arrest and also IDF generals as well. You have to hear this to believe this. The International Criminal Court in The Hague is contemplating issuing arrest warrants against senior Israeli government and military officials as war criminals. This would be an outrage of historic proportions International bodies like the ICC arose in the wake of the Holocaust committed against the Jewish people. They were set up to prevent such horrors, to prevent future genocides. Yet now, the International Court is trying to put Israel in the dock. It's trying to put us in the dock as we defend ourselves against genocidal terrorists and regimes, Iran of course, that openly works to destroy the one and only Jewish state. Branding Israel's leaders and soldiers as war criminals will pour jet fuel on the fires of anti-Semitism, those fires that are already raging on the campuses of America and across capitals around the world. It will also be the first time that a democratic country fighting for its life according to the rules of war is itself accused of war crimes. The Israeli army, the IDF, is one of the most moral militaries in the world. It takes endless measures to prevent civilian casualties, measures that no other army takes. It does so while fighting a terrorist enemy, which uses its own civilians as human shields. You know the truth. Hamas places its weapons, its terrorists, in hospitals, schools, mosques, and throughout civilian areas. They do this in order to win immunity and to maximize civilian casualties. So while Hamas shows no care for the lives of Palestinians and steals humanitarian aid meant for civilians, Israel is facilitating a surge of humanitarian assistance to Gaza. And we do this to ensure that the Palestinian population's humanitarian needs are met rather than commend Israel for abiding by the rules of war while fighting an enemy that violates every rule of war, including holding 133 Israeli men, women, and children hostage. Who's the ICC targeting? The democracy called Israel. And in targeting Israel, the ICC would be targeting all democracies because it would be undermining their inherent right to defend themselves against savage terrorism and wanton aggression. Clearly, this threat by the ICC is not an attempt to enforce the law. Israel is not even subject to the court's jurisdiction, and it has an independent legal system that rigorously investigates all violations of the law. Rather, this ICC attempt is an attempt to paralyze Israel's very ability to defend itself. The government and people of Israel reject outright this grave threat to our security, this grave threat to our very existence. And I want to assure you, no ICC action will impact Israel's ironclad determination to achieve the goals of our war with Hamas terrorists. We will destroy Hamas's military and governing capabilities in Gaza. 
we will release all our hostages and we will ensure that Gaza never poses a threat to Israel again. Israel expects the leaders of the free world to stand firmly against the ICC outrageous assault on Israel's inherent right of self-defense. We expect them to use all the means at their disposal to stop this dangerous move. Six months after the terrible Hamas massacre of October 7th, 80 years after the horrors of the Holocaust, the Jewish state calls on decent people everywhere to reject this outrage by the ICC, to stand with Israel as we fight the barbarians of Hamas and Iran, and as we work to secure a more peaceful world. And that was courtesy of the Israeli government, um, the Israeli Prime Minister's office, as well as the Israeli government um, press office. Uh, and it was so important what Benjamin Netanyahu said, the Israeli Prime Minister, because Israel is under attack. And if this uh, ICC agenda, evil plan uh, is able to take place, and uh, they're able to arrest uh, the Israeli Prime Minister and Israeli generals and diplomats, then they're going to come after Britain, British soldiers, and also American soldiers, and the West will be helpless in able to defeat Islamic terrorism. Uh, we've got two minutes left of, of the program, Len, so it, it just it's summing up, and from our viewers watching as well, as we try to give an update of the news in Israel this week, how important is it that the Christians during this time of fear, during this time that Israel's under attack, really stand up and speak up for the people of Israel and the Jewish people that are suffering unprecedented uh, abuse in terms of the rise of Jew hatred in this country and around the world? It's critical. It's our calling. It's, our existence depends on it. <laughs> Uh, there's lots we could talk about here. These are huge subjects, but but even doing practical things. This, this coming Monday, Bank Holiday Monday, th there's a there's a march taking place in London under the banner of March uh, for Life, and there's another one taking place in Oxford. Come along and show the Jewish people that you're willing to stand up and be counted with them. It'll it'll impact them like no like nothing else. Absolutely. Uh, Len, I just want to thank you so much for being my, my guest on the Middle East Port. It's a pleasure to uh, work with you again and uh, Kolokovod for the work that you do and the rest of the team do at ICJ UK in standing with Israel and the Jewish people at this critical time. Thank you. And I want to thank you for watching uh, this programme at home. Now, what the International Criminal Court is proposing to arrest the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, together with his war cabinet, um, is an absolute moral outrage. And the danger is that if this takes place, then our own uh, country's ability to fight against terror supporting states like um, the Islamic Republic of Iran or to confront Islamic terrorists wherever they are, whether in Europe or whether in the Middle East, will be hindered. And we will see that our troops, our government, are in the docks with the International Criminal Court. Therefore, it's imperative that we speak up against this evil, defend Israel and the Jewish people. And I want to thank you for watching this week's edition of the Middle East Report.